Thanks for staying with As It Happens. My guest tonight is SAFTU General Secretary Zuelin Zimavavi. We're discussing the impact of the relationship between government unions and workers and what we need to do in order to agree on how exactly to move the country forward. Um, Mr. Vavi, let me bring you back to the issue of austerity. Um, many of perhaps the decisions that have been taken, especially in line with even the wage increase requests themselves, have been to do with what government can and can't afford. For a long time, even individuals like yourselves have been calling for austerity within government. Why is this not a response to that call? No, austerity is a completely different program. But let me just make the last point in the previous uh, discussion. NUMSA Special Congress, which was called following many years of assessment of the state of affairs in terms of deindustrialization, uh, the decline of the base of the manufacturing, the slaughter of jobs, which we call a job loss bloodbath, the, the deteriorating wages, increasing poverty, increasing inequalities, and all of that, come to a, to, to a conclusion that COSATU must review this alliance. Workers are getting absolutely very little, if anything, out of this, of this alliance, which is the real reason why there were some in the ANC and the SACP engineered that they must be dismissed and some of us who said no hold on let's have a discussion instead of resorting to uh, cutthroat politics we were ourselves thrown out into the streets together with them so we've got to take that into consideration that <laughs> some of us whilst we were still inside Kosato began to say eh, eh, we're getting very little in this relationship we go to vote we go to mobilize workers to vote for this thing and we are unable to change the direction of the economic policies that the government have introduced since but, 1996. But as, as it stands, then, you would have to wait on workers to also reach that same moment that, that, that you have to, 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 to a large degree. We, we ourselves, at some point, were blinded by loyalty and love. And I can tell you those two are a terrible but, combination. But, but should, you, should you not then allow the workers that are in that space will, to that, continue to be blinded, as you put it, by that loyalty and by that love? We believe that the majority of them are beginning to see that this relationship is not working for us as nurses, yes, the doctors, the, the teachers, the police. Yes, but the response, the response will speak for itself. The response if will you, be... If you were in, to look in, at in, the in, social in, media now, you will see how angry those members of all of these unions are against their leadership. And we believe, and you're going to prove this in the, in the road shows that we're going to embark upon as early as next week, workers are shifting their loyalty. Is, is, is it part of your campaign as SAFTU to uh, perhaps point, uh, you know, poke holes into the alliance and raise some of the issues that you feel? Is it all about what goes on in the tripartite alliance and not necessarily what then you are going to do for workers? We exist to occupy a vacuum that exists. Workers need a fighting militant, not a sweetheart, trade union you know, federation yeah. and, and my that argument is that if if absolutely. indeed if indeed that's the case workers will see it for themselves they are seeing but it, it for feels themselves. like you're going out of your way to show the alliance as being um, a, a, an alliance that is not worth supporting isn't that something that just in the same way which you have said you were part of the alliance you experienced it isn't that a moment that every public service worker needs to go through for themselves that's why we're saying to them 2014 you could only get one percent improvement of your wages when the food inflation was running at 15 percent when the transport inflation was running at 12 percent two items in the food basket in which you spend 60 percent of your salaries of your salaries on they didn't listen it's now sure. at the end of the three years they're not only going to get one percent some of them at least those at level seven to eleven ten will be getting a 0.5 percent above inflation uh, in the second sure. and the third year and some of them those who are at level 11 and 12 will be getting no improvement in their working conditions or in their living and, standards. And, and, and in the, in the 
end, whatsoever. And in the end, the numbers will speak for themselves. I really want us to move on from this issue and um, talk about the issue of the job cuts and austerity in the public sector. What I asked okay, is, in, in terms of um, this being a way in which government can limit its spending, is it not, is it not a response to calls that organizations like yourselves no, have made no, no, around uh, no, no, how no, government spends no, no, no. its money? We have said to the government it must stop with stages. We have been in the streets to campaign against corruption. We have called on the, on the president to cut the size of his cabinet from this untenable 70 plus back to where it was at the beginning of our democracy in 1994, which was 14. We have called for, the, for rationalization. We have called on government to do a zero budgeting so that we can account for every cent of uh, that is being spent on education and healthcare because we believe that there is something fundamentally going wrong. How could we, a country with so much resources, have such poor results in comparison to countries that have far more lesser resources in terms of education, for example? Swaziland, Botswana, Zimbabwe have far lesser resources than we have. That's what we have been campaigning for. That's not austerity. That's prudent expenditure of government resources to benefit the citizens of our country. So, so then where should, should Austerity is this uh, nonsense that comes from Washington, in particular in response to the world economic crisis of 2008, where government are being asked by the rating agencies and by the 1% that controls the resources of the world to rather turn on workers and the poor in solving the crisis of capitalist system that imploded in 2008 and in South Africa made worse by the fact that we are now being paid for the crisis that was created by the ANC factional battles, uh, the Zuma, the Guptas, mm -hmm. the ESCOM and, and crisis and, of course, all, and everything. All, all of that ha has happened and we find ourselves in this situation. Where must government get the money to foot these increases? That question which is fundamentally wrong, uh, Siswam, in this way. You don't ask the victims of austerity to find solutions to a crisis they did not create. The government which sat for nine years when the state-owned enterprises were being destroyed through a chronic capitalism, when the government departments were being used to deploy the worst you can find in society, when the government was driving us into a predatory state and where the powerful uh, hyenas will be in charge of our political and economic system. They sat quiet and did absolutely very nothing. We who were fighting against that can't now be asked the question, so where do we get the resources? The people who created the conditions under which we now live in this economy must be the ones fairly who must answer that question. And what if those people are no longer in government? No, they are. Do you think that the, the crisis in this country was created by one person? No, I don't believe in that. We believe that the factions as a whole fighting over no political or ideological difference are responsible for this. The ANC government as a whole, all of those were in the National Executive Committee, in the cabinet, sat quietly and did nothing except very few who raised their voices. Those are the people who should ask a question. So how do we get out of the crisis? But you do not dare, and that's the message we're going to be sending to ESCOM tomorrow in the streets, we are refusing to resolve the crisis that you created at the back of workers. <laughs> and that's our bottom line. And that's why we're rejecting this deal, because this deal seeks to impose on the backs of workers to solve the crisis, a capitalist crisis, a crony capitalist crisis in South Africa by, by getting workers thrown into the streets and imposing sure. a wage freeze on them. And SAFTU will not pay 
play that ball whatsoever. We are going into the streets, we're going to educate the public servants, we're going out to convince them that they can continue in that relationship if they want to pay for the sins of others, but that they certainly did not create. Mr. Bavi, just one final question. As things stand, one of, would one of the answers to the current um, fractures within the unions, is it not a, a unity amongst unions, but by the sounds of it, it, it doesn't seem like you would be any close to that. We've written a letter, by the way, to Kosato some weeks Very ago briefly, please. We're to running say, out of time. please, man, we want to see what you read that we do not see. And so that they can at least have a conversation with us and we engage on the table to say, what is that we see? We're seeing a worsening crisis for the working people in this country. What do they see on their side? Tomorrow we will see some glimpses of unity on the ground. NUMSA, NUM and Solidarity have a joint action. In the bus strike, we saw some glimpses of the fact that workers can work together despite them ex uh, existing in two different federations. We hope that that will be a new spirit going forward. Certainly, we believe that a fragmented trade union movement is only good music in the ears of management. And we're working very hard to convince those who fear unity of workers that actually you cannot claim to be serving the interest of workers if your business is about keeping workers divided. Mr. Zolinze Mavavi, thanks for coming on to Newsnight. On, on to As It Happens, rather. Uh, that's where we'll wrap it for tonight on As It Happens, a look at South Africa under the Ramaphosa administration. <laughs>